Does she do her work from a laptop or is it just from the phone? Just from the phone. What about your bank account? I tried it. Her, her logins are different than mine. I don't it's not a joint account. It's a joint account, but like she controls all of it. Like she doesn't let me do the finances because she, I, I was pretty horrible back in the day, so she just kind of handles all that and she does it. I have the apps on my phone, but I don't have her login to get into it. Okay. That's can you log into your account though? I can. No, I don't have a. You don't have a laptop, but she has the one down there. So, but her login is different. Her login, I don't know her login. Like I know the password, but I don't know her login to use or anything. It's always the same password for the one I want five capital S W. But it's just a matter of getting the login. Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. In this episode, we'll be dealing with micro expressions where you see a big reaction where Chris Watts is asked about his wife's work. Now, it is not the audio clip that I've just played, and I am going to play the actual footage where you can see it and hear it at the same time. Now, I don't think it's True Crime Rocket Science to say you need to almost close your eyes and first listen to, to the words in isolation. Listen to the content, listen to get the context of what is being spoken about. And then almost do the opposite. Blank out the sound, mute the sound and just watch the micro expressions and so on. And become very familiar with that side, the visual side. And then do both. The, there's a strange thing with the brain when you're looking for something it can almost in a weird way mute out certain observations mute out certain thoughts and what we want to do is turn on all the all the taps all the we want everything flowing out at the same time we want to catch every little detail now if I can give you a comparison to the meerkats it's um, it's a situation, I've been in that situation before where I've sat in the middle of a meerkat burrow and uh, I've, I later found out that how humans were, or how the meerkats were habituated to human beings in their, basically in their home, is it, start, it starts off about um, 100 yards away or 100 meters away that, that the observers or photographers sit in chairs or something and then they move gradually closer over a period of time and eventually what you notice is the meerkats block out the people that are right around them and all that they want to notice are things like food um, predators flying in the air like eagles or hawks or falcons and other things like that and so they literally even though you've got these big giants stomping through their their home basically or over their home you know, putting down folded folding chairs right there picnicking essentially on their home they block you out they block out what you say your movements and so on and we've got to be careful not to do the same thing we've got to see everything now I did previously make an episode about you know was it MLM that turned Chris Watts against his wife did it did MLM have an effect? And my assessment in that episode was to say, I don't think so. That, you know, he wasn't really opposed to multi-level marketing. This video is going to challenge that, but in a, in a kind of a different way. It's coming to that from a different perspective. At the end of this episode, I'm going to be telling you about the live that I'm doing tomorrow. It has to do with the... Uh, the love shirt that was apparently found in the walk-in closet uh, just off the upstairs main bedroom and what the implications are of that we're going to talk about what the, the the theme is going to be for tomorrow's live stream so if you're interested in that uh, wait till the end of the episode um, I'm also going to be doing an episode called towards non-dualism it's basically carrying on from the previous episode dealing with beyond dualism and if you think about dualism in terms of divorce that divorce is really all about dualism it's not only a duel between couples but it is where that dualistic attitude really comes to the fore 
And that is exactly what was happening in the days and hours leading up to this family tragedy. If you're finding this content interesting, please uh, subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell if you want notifications. Like, share, leave a comment and let's get started. So in the same way that I've made a meerkat analogy, I want to make another analogy as we go into this. I'm quite a fan of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, also known as the MCU. I've be, really been watching the WandaVision series. I've been catching all the gossip and leaks and whatever on other channels. There's, there's a whole cottage industry of channels just talking about spoilers and whatnot. And what is incredible about the finale, which was, I think, yesterday, Friday, uh, you had people just getting so worked up with possible leaks, um, speculation and so on, that ultimately when the episode showed um, something like, I don't know if you want to say 90% or 80% of what people were imagining simply didn't happen. It was a, a spectacular episode, but also a straightforward episode. But what it shows you is how people can get caught up in uh, speculation to the extent that you assume that that is true which makes you assume that that is true and you eventually end up with a totally different reality and you've got to be careful if you don't verify information it doesn't mean where you are going with your hypothesis is real and so we've got to be careful with that especially when you talk about that love shirt now in this episode I want to concentrate on what what said in the clip right in the beginning, which was the lead up to the micro expression I want us to concentrate on. But he was basically telling Nicole Atkinson and Officer Coonrod that, you know, he couldn't check on Shanann's banking details despite them having a joint account, despite him having the apps on his phone. And I must say at that point, I would have been tempted if I'd been in the room just saying, um, do you mind can I have a look at your phone and or, or say something to him like which um, which is your banking app but sort of leaning over his shoulder and then and then just pressing the banking app you know pressing the screen of the banking app and seeing what happens I'm pretty sure it would have logged in and I, the reason I say that is if when you use WhatsApp or Facebook or Gmail or whatever on your phone you don't need to log in every time so his story that he knew the password but he didn't know the login is is really um, crazy the other thing that I think is interesting is when he talks about I think it he says that Shanann did everything on her phone and then when it's asked about the banking then suddenly oh no the banking was done on her laptop kind of thing and we know that when Shanann was in uh, Arizona she got an alert from him buying something on a credit card right on her phone not on a laptop on her phone and I think it's quite clear that Chris Watts would would have wanted to keep the banking the finances the transactions secret even though he was perhaps hiding the the restaurant purchases I think he probably knew that other transactions such as for fuel and just ancillary things uh, you probably would want to keep secret and so I really believe that he did have access to the banking details and also I think it was playing a big part in his mentality at the time I think he wanted to go forward from there and have have control of the finances so the fact that he would say you know I have nothing to do with it I don't even have access I just don't think is accurate I do think what is interesting with an oil operator is that they would probably know based on electronic data what is going on at various oil fields. So with Anadarko you would have a whole fabric of electronic data from GPS to all sorts of other uh, digital um, networks and layers that are going to give you an idea of how the whole ecosystem is fitting together. And I think he used that psychology in terms of the, you know, trying to commit a crime under the veil of a sort of digital network, but hidden. So in other words, if you can manipulate the digital veil, you can, you can make your crime invisible. 
In other words, if you're looking at the digital veil, but you're able to tamper with the digital veil, then you can deal with that. And I want to do a separate video dealing with the Vivian side, something where, that he volunteers almost around this part of the body cam. We volunteer something to Conrad about the Vivint alerts. So without f any further ado, I want to deal with where he talks about Shanann's work. And I want you to, we're going to play it about three times. I want you to concentrate on the words, first of all. Then I want you to concentrate on the facial expression the second time. And then the third time, both. And then we will make our um, analysis from there. Worth playing for. So now we're going through the body cam and it's obviously in mute. And notice Chris Watts is spending, focusing his attention on his phone. We're going to look at that in more detail in a moment. Now look at his, did you see that curl of his, of his lip? And then the arching of his eyebrows at the same time. Now we're going to do the same thing with the audio. So that's the part I wanted to draw your attention to is Kunrod just asked a very simple question. What days does she normally work? What days does Shanann normally work? And the answer, he says all, and then he says every day. And you see a big grimace. You see a big twist in his mouth to the, the one side. Metrical twist to his mouth, which shows contempt, which shows anger, which shows resentment. And I think that that is true. I think he resented the amount that Shanann was on her phone doing MLM and probably doing other things as well. And we spoke previously about the glue holding the family together and that Chris Watts, you know, the affair was part of that. But I don't think there was too much glue holding it together to begin with. If someone is on their phone all the time, then you don't have the glue to begin with. You aren't having special moments together. Or if you do have a special moment and each one is interrupted by a selfie or trying to monetize the moment it just cheapens the whole experience and so there's not going to be closeness does she do her work from a laptop or is it just, just, from, the phone. just from the phone it's not a joint account it's a joint account but like she controls all of it like she doesn't let me do the finances because she I was pretty horrible back in the day, so she just kind of handles all that, and she does it. I have the apps on my phone, but I don't have her login to get into it. Okay. Unfortunately, that's... Can you log into your account, though? I can... No, I don't have a, you don't have a laptop, but she has the one down there, so... But her login, just her login, I don't know her login. Like, I know her password, but I don't know her login. It's always the same password, 4281, capital S W. Right, if she's getting gas or yeah, somewhere. Does that make sense? What days does she typically do work? All every day. Every day. What, what was the name of the company again? Uh, LaBelle. L-E-B-E-L. -E Where are they based out of? Texas. But they don't have like a... Yeah. They don't have like an office. It's just... All Does she have someone that she reports to though? Uh, she has her leaders, but they're both in the northeast part of the country. Like that. She has Addie Maloney, she has Amanda Aikman, she has I Sam Paisley. Okay. What, do you have her phone number? 
Yeah. Yeah. Would you say her last name was? It's, uh, it's amazing what the littlest things can do, like, in life. Like, when you surround yourself with people who are just um, negative, not happy with life, which I get it, I've been there, I've done that. What days does she typically do work? All every day. Every day. Yeah, always. What, what was the name of the company again? Uh, Lebel. L e b e l. What days does she typically do work? Every day. Yeah, always. What, what was the name of the company again? Uh, Lebel. L-E-B-E-L. So I feel I want to amend what I said earlier about did MLM have an impact in driving Chris Watts away? I don't think he was averse to the money that she made or the money that he thought she made or the work that he thought she was doing. I think it was very eager that she do work that she do um, you know that she would earn an income but I think the way that that manifested in her working all day every day do you remember that Saturday where she sat on the couch where he had his back to her and the kids are playing in the lounge and what is she doing she's working it's his Saturday it's his weekend off but Shanann is working Saturday Sunday every single day in fact she seems to be constantly working and if you think that that it's that it's a nice way of um, spending time together where your partner's always working um, you know it's not and I must uh, sort of wonder what kind of partner I am you know I am always writing always working on patreon whatever it's just not fun it's not fun for someone to be constantly distracted in this case by their phone and I think the result of that, of Shanann always being on her phone, always monetizing a moment, always looking for an opportunity, always looking at Facebook notifications, was that Chris Watts started doing the same thing. And I think it became so habitual, so innate, that I think he started getting addicted to his phone as well. And I think that caused a schism, a distraction, a disconnect between him and Shanann. It was through the mechanism of their phones. And what is amazing when I was going through this footage, I was actually just going through this footage trying to find the body cam where you can see the love t-shirt. That was really what I was trying to do. But I was really struck by how often Chris Watts is looking at his phone when he's got a police officer in his house. He's got Nicholas Atkinson sort of running around. Nicole Atkinson is there. His eyes are just glued to his phone. He's just going through the phone. And I think if you imagine that with Shanann, Shanann's on her phone, he's on his phone. You see the photos on Facebook, you see the, the happy moments. But what about the, the, the hours, the hours of silence, the hours of coldness, the hours of distraction? And so it was also through his phone that he, I think, fell in love with Nicole Kissinger. Through his phone, she sent him pictures of herself and he obviously connected with her as well. So... At the same time that the phone was a connector, there's also a disconnector. And I think this is the case in many relationships and also many marriages. Right, I'm not going to take it further than that. Um, it's really been very difficult syncing the video to the audio in this particular episode. Uh, some of the files are very, very big and it causes my computer to crash. I'm not the best editor in the world, but this 
episode really took two or three days to put together and you know it's it's a heck of a lot of work and and then there's so many glitches so I don't know I found it very difficult I hope you found it interesting um, as I say I'm going to be doing a live stream tomorrow dealing with the possible implications of if that shirt that was found in the walk-in closet on that sort of stool in the middle of the walk-in closet if that is the love shirt, does that have an implication on where the crime scene happened? Does it move the crime scene away from the bedroom? Does it move the crime scene away from the stairs? Where was the crime scene? And so we're going to look into that. For those interested in Patreon, there's a series I'm doing every Thursday or Friday on the Ripper. There's a lot of interest in that at the moment. I'm also up to chapter 12, I think. 13 is coming up later today in the Craven Silence audiobook. That's on the John Bonnet Ramsey case. There are 22 chapters in total, so I'm almost beyond halfway. And so almost every month I upload a new audiobook. So if you sign up for $5, you're getting an audiobook which is cheaper than the actual book. And then you can also have access to um, at least half a dozen other audiobooks. Anyway, I hope to see you guys tomorrow at 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. That's Sunday, 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, where we'll be talking about has the crime scene shifted. So until then, stay safe, and I'll see you guys next time.